President uh, Vucic, let me, let me ask you, um, many world leaders are not as adulatory with the press as those of us in the press are, um, and have fought back with very strong rhetoric and at times with tough new laws against fake or unfavorable news. Um, are governments justified in these criticism and, and in passing some new laws that are limiting uh, the ability of the press to investigate? First of all, thank you very much for giving me a chance to speak here, although I didn't deserve it for many reasons. First of all, I wanted to say that uh, Serbia, although we improved our economy significantly, and I'm very proud of our economic reform, reforms in the recent years, for the first time in our contemporary history we have a surplus in our budget for the third year in a row, Growth rate 4.5, one out of five European countries with the biggest growth. In 2018, uh, we changed the trajectory of our public debt. When I became the prime minister, it was 79% GDP ratio. Now it's below 50%. Everything regarding economy, we did it in a good way. What we didn't, good in, uh, what we didn't do in a proper way, uh, I wouldn't say it was a freedom of expression. There to say that we have still very much polarized press. We have many problems, but I'll speak for myself on a... And I'll take one example just for everybody to learn something from my case. Matthew was speaking at one, I don't know what kind of conference that was, either in Poland or somewhere else, I think in Poland. And he was saying he was doing his preparation and he got some information from Serbian journalists that situation in Serbia was critically bad and something bad might happen in the future. And then he attacked Serbia saying, well, we think that Serbia will be the very next country in which some, some journalists might be killed. Fortunately, it didn't happen. It happened in four or five EU countries in the meantime. Some shootings were happening even in Montenegro, but what happened? I'm not here to defend myself or to attack Matthew. I came here and I did it privately before we entered the session. Because something happened even in Serbia. One guy was writing something in local press, in a papers that I have never heard of. Against local guys in power, and uh, surprisingly, or it shouldn't be said surprisingly, his garage was attacked, then fire was spread to the first floor of his house. He, his entire family were in jeopardy. And then I started thinking of Matthew's words. Although I didn't believe that it might happen in my country because I thought everything was only false allegations. And I still think that a part of it, anyway, was something like that. We arrested a guy that ordered that. We arrested a guy and a lady that committed that, but still mastermind hasn't been arrested. And we think that we know who was behind it. And I can say that we expect to finalize the case with all the evidences and proofs within, mm -hmm. I can't say, a week yeah. or 10 days. Mm -hmm. But after that, I started, I learned something and I started to be very cautious and very much afraid and that's why we need to finish this case and we need to be so-called brutal in all similar cases. Mm -hmm. And I'm speaking about our responsibility. I'm not criticizing guys from the opposition that are saying for our journalists uh, are sluts or whores if they don't like what they, what they do. No, I'm speaking about ourselves. On the other hand, we haven't criminalized fake news or mm -hmm. people that are violating, in a way, uh, 
professional ways of delivering the truth. And I don't know how to do it, to tell you the truth. We saw a German example, but if we were going to do the same in Serbia, people would say, okay, now we, you're doing some limitations, you're banning something for us, you know, particularly mm -hmm. in social networks. And these are things that uh, are stopping us in that. Anyway, we got not the very best marks in the last two years from reporters on Frontier, from uh, Reporters Without Borders. And, and Freedom House also. Yes, and uh, in a way that I'm very proud of our economic reforms mm -hmm. and the way that we kept stability, tranquility and peace in the region. I'm not proud at all because of that. And I'm certain that uh, we're going to change that trajectory. Yeah. So, so you're committing to... to I had yesterday discussion with people from Reporter Without Borders. I asked them to come to Serbia to give us unnecessary support to bring some experts, particularly regarding state aid for medias, because that's, it seems to be a vital, a vital issue. And I'm sure that in a year or two, I can come here and that we'll be able to be proud of freedom of press and freedom of expression in a way that I'm very proud of all economic reforms that we have recently taken. President Vucic, you have been at various times quite critical of um, various aspects of press coverage in your country. What, what do you think should happen for the press to become more trustworthy and, and for you to feel more comfortable with the press? First of all, I wanted to say one sentence about impact that uh, free press might make on economic environment. I think that's, at least in Europe, something of the biggest significance. Not the biggest, but almost the biggest significance. Because Serbia attracted 60% of overall Western Balkans FDI. And we did it because of good laws on economy, good bankruptcy law, very flexible labor law, uh, good subsidies and incentives. And I think that we were able to attract even 70, up to 75% of overall Western Balkans FDIs if we had, if we could boosted, our, boosted ourselves of having yeah. better results. In okay, can I ask you to areas. keep that? I agree with almost everything that Matthew said. There is something else I wanted to add. We'll have to change ourselves. We'll have to secure press environment, and we'll do it. And I'm almost certain that you are going to find no other leaders in the world that would say the same words as I'm doing today. And everybody else will only defend his or her position, and it's always easy. I'm not going to do that. And uh, on the other hand, there is something that is very much objective and that we cannot beat, none of us. I was present at that, uh, one important conference that took place in Abu Dhabi. It was done under Chatham House rule. And former president, former French president Sarkozy was saying something. He was provoked by uh, Matsuyoshi Son, uh, that uh, Japanese guy was, he was number one at fourth list in 2000. And he was saying that there is a lack of leaders in the world today. And then Sarkozy was saying something that was very interesting. He said that it cannot be any leaders in a current world. Because you have social networks. You have one guy with one profile, with one post. How can he beat thousands of fake and real profiles? Mm -hmm. And uh, there is no trust. There is no trust at all. And what Tina was saying today, people sell emotions, not facts. Even if you ask my people in my country whether they are satisfied with economic performance, they would say, although you have all the numbers here, which I exposed, they would say, well, we still feel very poor, we are not satisfied, or whatever else they can find about it. It means that facts mm -hmm. are not in fashion, yeah. emotions are something that you are selling, and negative emotions right. 
it's always easier to sell it than positive emotions. So, so, basi so basically your point is that if the press my was focusing is, more on facts and it would be more yes, trustworthy. Yes, my point is that it's not going to be an easy job, right. either for Matthew, either for all the others right. that would base their business on facts. Okay. Uh, you said you were yesterday visited by Reporters Without Borders, and if I'm correct, correct me if I'm not, uh, they said that the biggest issue in Serbia is uh, verbal aggression made by those in position of political power towards journalists. Now, thinking of that, my network that I work for was for, well, is still quite critical towards government in Serbia. Um, for a very long period of time, whenever my colleague would come to your press conference, you would emphasize that the question is coming from somebody from the American N1 television. Why would you be doing that in a country that was bombed by NATO and we're constantly repeating towards somebody that is somehow connected with the US is not exactly a compliment? Thank you for saying this, because it's not only the fact that I'm running away from this type of questions, and I saw that uh, it raised huge interest, not only in my country, but in the entire region. And it shows something. First of all, dear Hrvoje, you couldn't find anything bad that I said about network you belong to. And it's good that you heard that they're doing their job criticizing our government 24-7 with no problems at all. That's something that I'm proud of. On the other hand, yes, I was saying that till six, seven months ago. Then one of your journalists asked me not to do that anymore. And after that, I haven't repeated it. And I said to them, why do you mind that? Was I saying something that was not true or was it hurting you? They were saying, yes, we didn't feel well when you were saying that we were coming from the US television. And I said, okay, I'm not going to repeat it. And it has never happened again. And I'm the only one, just for you to know, because it's not that everything's black and white. I'm always accepting and receiving all the journalists in my country, all of them. And I'm the only one who does it. Because if you're gonna send let's say, some journalists to the oppositional headquarters, they don't allow them to entry their premises. I do receive all of them and do reply to everyone on every single question. So, and, and I think in a polite way, if that was not the case always, and I think it was, I'm always ready to do an excuse let's, and uh, to change myself.